Hello, this is Scott Manley here once again for some more Kerbal Space Adventures. Today we are going to go further, higher, faster and spinnier than we've ever been before. And here is the magnificent space chariot which is going to bring me to the stars in style. The design principle here is we're building outwards instead of upwards. Every single rocket on this will fire at launch, contributing to the thrust to get it off the ground and into space. But the fuel from the outer tanks will be passed inwards to feed the inner tanks. The idea being that those outer rockets are basically lifting their fuel mass and then we're dropping those uh, as we don't need them. It's fine in principle, but of course, when we put it into practice, we encounter a number of problems. Firstly, a vehicle of this size tends to break itself on the launch pad. The rockets tend to damage, and when we launch it, we end up heading straight into the ground, as you can see. The way you fix this is you attach stack decouplers below all the engines so that they get damaged by the pad rather than the engines themselves. The second problem is a little more subtle. Now those fuel lines that I've talked about also act as struts and the way I attached them was I would always put them on the left side and, and use a symmetry tool to uh, basically copy it to the other tanks. Unfortunately I've discovered that using rockets with this simple fuel transfer technique tends to make them want to spin. After thinking through this for a while I realised it's because the fuel lines are always placed slightly off centre with respect to the decouplers. So as soon as any thrust is applied to that rocket it will turn it and it just so happens that it will all turn all three in the same direction and make the rocket want to spin. In my previous moon landing attempts this was annoying, but for something this big what happens is it starts to spin so fast that it goes out of control and basically explodes. Even with the mechanical jab control system at work, I just can't keep this thing straight. So I have to go back to the drawing board and add in extra struts to basically offset the torque. And so now we have the final version of Delta V. Yes, it's a terrible name, but it's named after what it provides in spades. And so for my first trick, we will start with a new destination. For optimal launch trajectory, we wait until it's morning. The idea being that we're going to launch into an eastwards orbit and then keep on going until we achieve escape velocity from the planet. By waiting until morning, our escape trajectory is now going to be aligned backwards along the planet's orbit, so we're going to be burning retrograde nor naturally. And so we keep thrusting until we escape the planet's influence with a speed of about 4 kilometers per second. And now, with plenty of fuel to spare, we can begin our proper retrograde burn to bring us down towards the sun. The planet's velocity is about 9.7 kilometers per second, so you need a serious amount of delta V to get this thing into a sun grazing trajectory. But we do it, and we have fuel to spare. Now thanks to Mechanical Jeb, we know that this is not going to actually crash into the sun, but it is going to pass close to the surface but it's going to take a little while to get there, so we accelerate time up to 10,000 times normal speed until we get closer. These bold carbonauts are wearing the latest in spacesuit technology designed to let them survive in the harshest of environments. Passing this close to the sun will be no problem for the latest in life support technology. However, the scientists who came up with this mission forgot to account for one factor, the natural limits of the physics engine. As we travel faster and faster, we start to become unstable. The rocket picks up a spin. And try as I might, I find it impossible to keep this rocket straight. With the speed approaching 200 km per second, these carbonauts are voyaging into areas of the flight envelope that no one has seen and survived. But eventually it becomes too much for Kerbal engineering and the rocket spins itself apart, shattering its pieces into orbit around the sun. Moments later, the capsule crashes into the surface of the sun despite being several thousand kilometers above it. Well, it's not just the limits of the physics engine, but the limits of the game. There are pieces that survive, fragments that uh, pass through the window and they continue outwards uh, on a hyperbolic trajectory somehow, having picked up a ridiculous velocity. But yeah, the capsule was not among them. I said we should construct a giant memorial to this lost crew and launch it into space. But that will be in another video where I explain all about the bioleptic transfer maneuver. Until next time, fly safe.